Know the issue with the German Chancellor not long ago admitting that the UK and French soldiers had been actually out there operating. But that's a separate issue. Then you have Zelensky, of course, who's trying to say, yeah, y'all are all right. I'll need to come on my side. When he says this, all leaders and international organizations must respond to Russia's actions, and the response must be tough. Putin does not want any peace. He only wants war and death. He does not care whom he kills. The main goal is to destroy first Ukraine and Ukrainians, and then you, dear partners. That is why it is a matter of survival, and not only for Ukraine that the world reacts to Russian evil and exerts pressure and hits back. So, you keep seeing President Biden say routinely when he talks about this in public that, hey, Ukraine's not asking for our men. We're not going to send our men. They just want the help. But now you're seeing that he's laying the foundation as saying, you guys got to come help us, because if we're all going to die, he's going to come after all of us. And though, I get it. Why he says that. I mean, his country has been invaded. He wants help from anywhere he can get it. He'll say whatever to get them. I get that. But not Macron, not some of these other countries who have nothing to gain by a war with Russia and everything to lose. So what is their play here? Zelensky is the architect of war, death, and destruction for Ukraine. And as I've said before, he's not Ukrainian. He's from the East. He grew up as a Russian speaker. He's thoroughly Russified, has no use for Ukraine. He was picked up as a puppet by the oligarch Key and established in power with the blessing and support of people like Newland. So that's the first point. Secondly, all of the globalist elites in Western Europe and in Eastern Europe are in trouble. They're in a position that is untenable. Macron is very weak. Schultz is weak, which is why Schultz is running away from Macron and his dumb ideas as fast as he can go. The globalist elites that are ruling Western Europe and, frankly, that are governing us here are in a very dangerous position. They are probably going to be removed in the near future. This is their last ditch attempt to stay in power. How do you stay in power when you're losing? Well, you pretend that there's a great enemy out there that threatens everyone. You try to convince everyone that you are their savior. And that's what Macron and his contemporaries are trying to do. It's not working. The leadership of the French army has scoffed at the idea of sending anybody to Ukraine. They know that the French military is in no position to go there and do anything. The same thing is true for the rest of the European militaries. Anybody who suggests otherwise is crazy. We are in no position to attack into Ukraine. Our position is fragile. We're not ready for a war of any magnitude against any major power on the planet. So it's all nonsense. It's empty rhetoric. It's designed to create an illusion they hope will keep them in power. It's not going to work. Now we're going to talk specifically about that issue about the United States Armed Forces. And that's a part of this I want to illuminate that people may not be aware of just how much trouble we're in internally on that. And I know that's an issue close to your near and dear to your heart. But let's look on back to the Macron stuff a second ago, because if that's his gamble that he's not going to have to act on that kind of thing, because there was a substack out, I believe it was this morning, where it's talking about that he's saying, and others are saying that not just of Russia, comes into NATO. There could be a problem, but if Russia moves on Odessa, that could be a red line that could cause actions. Now, I think that you said something about that's a possibility a second ago. If Russia starts moving in that direction because Ukraine doesn't have a negotiated settlement, then put Macron is going to be in a position to either be exposed as be tepid and not meaning what he said or acting and sending. 
UK French troops into Ukraine to which would be absurd. So where is that going? The only thing worse than provoking an unnecessary war is to try and bluff your way through one, and that's what everybody in the West is busy doing. We've run out of ammunition, out of equipment, we don't have enough trained troops, there's no stomach for it. The populations in Europe are beginning to slowly but surely wake up to reality that Russia poses no threat to them. So again, this is all an illusion. Now. As far as Odessa is concerned, it was made pretty clear from the offset of this crisis and conflict that the Russians would move on those areas that historically were Russian and contained Russian speakers. Odessa was never part of Ukraine, just as Crimea was never a part of Ukraine and the eastern portions in the Donbass Basin were always Russian speakers and Russian people. All of this is nonsense. The Russian leadership has said when this is over, which is another historic Russian city along with Odessa, will be Russian again. There's nothing new in that. If we try to move against the Russians and cross the border either from Moldova or Romania or Poland in an effort to stop the Russian seizure of Odessa, we will be at war with Russia because the Russians have also made it very clear they won't tolerate it. They will not tolerate ANATO presence in western Ukraine. This is where back to the original requirement. Say that's what in the first place is the NATO in Ukraine exactly. So if they go in there, they'll be at war with Russia. Russia's prepared for that. The general staff in Moscow has already been instructed to look at another 800,000 troops that could be mobilized for the purpose of waging wider war if required. This is not something the Russians want. Moscow doesn't want it. Putin's been trying to end this thing almost from the moment it started. We won't admit that because we're losing. And once you are in a losing position, you're going to do everything in your power with control of the media and the government to try and persuade your populations that you're not losing. Okay, funny you mention that because that's a perfect segue into. We have cut the music out of this because I don't want to get into any you issues on YouTube here. But check out this video and we can talk over this one. Basically, a commercial for NATO to talk about how strong we are with this new Nordic response, 2024. I mean, this makes it look like it's awesome and cool stuff, and we're tough, and we have bombers and all this. But, but, this is all a shell game. I mean, there's no substance underneath this that we're actually combat ready for Russia, who now has two years of high-level combat in truth. The Norwegians were better prepared in 1940 for the Germans that attacked, and they are today for what the Russians might do. And the German attack was feeble compared with what the Russians would launch. It's very tragic, and I see all these lovely girls in uniform pretending to be serious combat soldiers, and that, of course, is insane. The worst imaginable things would happen to those people on the battlefield. It's time for the people in Scandinavia, particularly in Norway, to wake up and smell the coffee. The way to avoid war with Russia is to come to terms with Russia right now in Eastern Europe and stop threatening Russia. All this video does is persuade the Russians that they now have a greater threat in Norway than actually exists. The same thing is true in Finland and Sweden where they're talking about putting NATO forces up near the Arctic Circle with missiles that could threaten Russia. This is sheer insanity. All this does is make matters worse and exacerbate the tensions. But you know, it looks great on television. People puff up their chests. They feel wonderful. They think of themselves as something they are not. We are not prepared for this. None of the Europeans are. We need to stop it. And if it was only this issue that we had to worry about, it would be a major concern because obviously this could very easily escalate into tactical nuclear exchange, which is just unfathomable. That anyone in the West, 
no matter what the circumstances domestically, would actually risk a potential nuclear escalation or somehow delude themselves into believing that Russia wouldn't really do that because they know whatever they would think. But that's literally rolling the dice and just hoping not an actual strategy because Putin has made it very clear that he is willing to do that if attacked by NATO, and if not, then there's no risk of it. But well, Dan, if I may just say for a second, if we confront the Russians, it'll be on their terms, if it's in western Ukraine, or for that matter in northern Norway. I mean, I can't imagine anything dumber than that. But if we do, we would face the unfortunate choice of either admitting defeat and conducting an ignominious withdrawal, which I think would be inevitable, or using nuclear weapons to compensate for our weakness on the ground. Remember, if you go back to 1969, the origins of flexible response were very clear. We didn't want to be in that position. We wanted to have enough conventional military power that we could deter the Russians. That meant making it clear to the Soviets at that point in time that if they attacked us, we had enough to resist them effectively and make the attack fail. That's very different from what we're doing now. We're threatening Russia with a series of attacks, and that's not how you make peace. That's how you create war. And that's actually my number one driving imperative or concern. Rather, is that we keep taking actions that don't deter the enemy, that don't make us safer, that don't work towards a negotiated settlement, but increase the chance of war. Unfortunately, it's not just there now. This one little point here I'm making, I was at the National Interest for a special dinner in 2019, and the dinner was populated with a number of neocons who were very anti-Russian in their outlook, free to express their hostilities to a Russian guest, by the way. And when this was over, I engaged one of them from the Atlantic Council in a discussion, and I said, don't you understand that if you press this issue in eastern Ukraine, you're going to end up with a war? And he looked at me and said, oh, that's ridiculous. There will be no war. That's not what we want. And there's not going to be a war. You don't understand. Russia won't do that. We have fundamentally misjudged and miscalculated Moscow from day one. It's time to stop. At some point, you have to listen to what the people in Moscow say and take it seriously. We aren't doing that. They've made it very clear if we get involved in any way in western Ukraine, we're going to end up at war with Russia, and that war could go to the global nuclear level unless we stay out. We don't want that. No sane human being, no president, 